Greetings, boys and ghouls. Welcome to the crypt again. Yep, it's your teller of terror tales, the crypt keeper, spooking. After that fairy tale of the vault keepers, I really feel sorry for you. So I'll tell you one of my most horrible yarns to make up. It's about an old man who always drives a black draped, old fashioned. Well, I'll begin at the beginning with the title. I call it People Who Live in Brass Hearses. <laughs> the horse snorts as it moves along the main street, hauling the old fashioned black velvet draped hearse wagon behind it. The driver sits stiffly, his face pale and drawn. Children lope along beside the funeral cart, yelling up at the expressionless, grim faced rain holder. Howdy, Mr. Bird. What's so funny, Mr. Bird? Come down for your vittles, Mr. Bird. Hey, like our mocking bird? <laughs> But Mr. Bird's expression doesn't change. He just sits there listening to the kids' insults and jibes, moving through the small town main street. Finally, he reins up the black draped hearse before the general store. Afternoon, Lionel. What'll be today? Usual, Ed. Sack of flour, sack of sugar, can of shortening, bottle of toilet water, beans. Old Lionel Bird never budges. He dictates his order to Ed, the storekeeper, and waits on his perch in the driver's seat of the hearse till it is brought out and stowed in the back. Okay, Lionel, that'll be the lot. That'll be twelve eighty as usual. Thanks, Ed. Here you are. Be seeing you. Then Mr. Bird cracks his whip and, turning the old-fashioned funeral wagon around, heads out on a small New England town once again. Bye, Mr. Bird. See you next month, Mr. Bird. Keep out of jail, Bird. The shrill cat calls of the children drift after Lionel Bird as he and a strange vehicle disappear up the dusty dirt road beyond the town limits. <laughs> Crazy old Bird, always driving that hearse wagon. Why, he ain't no undertaker. How come? Search me. I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> Yes, dear readers, nobody in that town knows why old Lionel Bird drives that hearse wagon. Why he never comes into town without it. Why he refuses to get off it when he does come in on his rare monthly visits. <laughs> nobody, that is, but me. All the townsfolk know is that he drove up in a town like that about a year ago. He didn't say where he came from. He just rented the old deserted house way up in the woods. When the kids went up there nosing around the place. Gosh, he's got the windows all covered up. I'm scared of him. Let's go. At first, everybody mistrusted old Lionel. They didn't like the way he secluded himself. Nobody ever saw him except for when he'd come into town driving the hearse. He's crazy, that's what he is. He ought to be run out of the country. Oh, he ain't harming anybody, Jeb. Ain't no law says you can't raise an old hearse to get truck around in. Ed, the storekeeper, used to get mad when Ed Lionel drove into town. Old Mr. Bird would refuse to get off the hearse. He demanded that Ed come out from his store and take his order. The store's inside, mister, not out on the street. You want to buy something, you come in and buy it. I got my reasons for staying up here, Ed. You want to sell me some vittles or not? But after a while, the townsfolk got used to old queer Mr. Bird. After all, they only saw him once a month. And nobody ever went to visit him up there where he lived. Even Ed didn't mind waiting on him out in the street after a while. Just put the stuff in the back, Ed. Sure thing, Lionel. The kids used to peer into the hearse while Ed was loading it with the purchases. Shucks, he ain't got anything in there. <laughs> yeah, I bet there's something behind that curtain. <laughs> yep, old Lionel has a hearse partitioned off with a curtain. Want to know what's behind it? Okay, I'll tell you. For the story, we'll have to go back a bit. Back to the time before he ever came to that small New England town with a strange vehicle. 
Back then, back before he even owned the old-fashioned hearse, Lionel lived in a lonely cabin way up in the mountains in another county. One day, two men came to the cabin. Look, Nick, smoke coming out. Somebody lives there, Red. The two men that came to Lionel's cabin way up in the mountains were strangers to those parts. They knew nothing about Lionel Bird. They were fugitives, fugitives from the law. Windows are covered, can't see who's inside. Come on, let's knock. So the fugitives, Nick and Red, knocked on the bird cabin door. A voice answered. Wait a minute, I'll be ready in a minute. E, this looks like a nice spot to hide out for a while, Nick. You're right there, Red. Finally, the voice inside the cabin sounded again. All right, you can come in now. Go ahead, Nick. Nick pushed open the cabin door. He peered into the gloom. Old Mr. Bird sat on a bench before a draped doorway. Who, who are you two? Hello, old timer. Maybe you can help us. Red closed the door behind them. Help, you, you lost? Uh, yeah, th th that's it, we lost. Uh, yeah, our car broke down. Suddenly, the still mountain air outside the cabin was split with the knifing sound of baying hounds. Nick, the bloodhounds. Damn, I didn't think they were so close. Bloodhounds? You, you criminals? The baying howls drew closer. Nick whipped out a knife and held it against the old man's throat. Yell yeah, timer, we're criminals, killers, and we'll kill you if you let on that we're in here. Go to the door. Tell them you ain't seen us. No, I ain't moving. Listen, old timer, you do as we say or I'll slit your throat. I'm not budging. I, I. They were right outside. Nick and Red's pursuers. They were hammering on old man Bird's door. Open up. It's Sheriff Allen. So help me, old man. What is it, Herb? Anything wrong? We're hunting down some killers. You seen them? I'll kill you, old man. No, Herb. Ain't seen them. Ain't seen them at all. Ain't seen nobody. The bang sounds disappeared down the mountainside. Nick and Red breathed sighs of relief. You were smart, old man. You did right. Now go. Leave. Don't be crazy, old man. We're gonna hide out here. No. No, you can't. Oh, can't we? Nick, give me your gun. W what are you gonna do? We're gonna kill you, you stupid old fuck. Huh? No, I, I... Bam! Bam! Old Mr. Bird slumped forward, dead. Now what, Red? We bury him outside. They left Mr. Bird's corpse and went out behind the cabin. They began to dig a shallow grave. We'll hold up here until things cool off. Then we'll head to Canada. Oh, that's a good idea. That's deep enough. Come on, let's go get him. Red and Nick went back inside. As they came to the door, they gasped. Holy, he ain't dead, but I pumped two forty-fives into him. Lionel sat upon the bench before the curtain doorway, his shotgun pointed at the two fugitives. She's double-barreled, you murdering rats. One shell for each of you. D -d Don't shoot, old-timer. We, we didn't mean to. Suddenly, Red looked down. His eyes widened in horror. A scarlet pool of blood oozed out from the doorway drape. Look, look, Nick. Blood. But he ain't bleeding. No, I'm not bleeding. Lionel looked at the two men. You didn't kill me. You killed my twin. Your, your twin? Yes, my, my Siamese twin. Good Lord. Lionel got to his feet. He moved away from the doorway. There, attached to Lionel's back, was the body of his Siamese twin, twisted grotesquely, dead. 
All of our lives we've lived here, everybody knew about us. Everybody but you. What are you going to do to us? Lionel began to tie the two killers up back to back. There, now you know how the helplessness we knew, my brother and I. Then he pushed them out of the cabin and into the shallow grave they dug for him. We've been burned from society all these years, buried alive, just as you are going to be. No, no, have mercy. But Lionel showed no mercy. The soft black earth choked off Red Nick's screams as Lionel filled their grave. <laughs> yep. Nobody in that small New England town knows why Lionel Bird sits on his hearse. Never gets down from it, but we know, don't we, kitties? Lionel had to buy that hearse after his Siamese twin's death. When Lionel came to the New England small town, his twin's body was in the back, behind the curtain. And every time he comes into town, it's there. You, you look like you don't believe me. Well, just sit tight. Lionel's coming up the road now. There. He's in front of his old house way out of town. The one with the curtained up windows. See how he looks around, making sure prying eyes aren't watching? Now, now he's getting there. There. Take a good look. Well, after all, Lionel's twin has been dead a year. Anybody would start decaying by then. What do you think the toilet water's for? And that's my story, fiends. Now I'll turn you back to the vault keeper. His column, which contains information on obtaining actual photos of us ghoul lunatics, follows a text, which follows me. Bye now. Remember, another man's hearse is his... <laughs>